Hey folks, this is Jawad Ahmad and today in this video we will be covering the development of the eye. Embryology has always been a difficult subject, at least for me. So I have decided to make a video on the development of the eye here so as to explain it as simply as possible. So first of all, the uh, brief overview or the today's presentation. Uh, we will be covering, first of all, the general discussion. The, we will be covering uh, the development of the optic cup since the third week of the embryo. We will start from the third week embryo and we will go all along the development of the optic cup. And then from the optic cup, we will explain the formation of each and every organ, uh, each and every um, part of the eye. Uh, so if you have a good hold of the anatomy of the eyeball, then uh, you are very much welcome. But if you don't have any knowledge about the anatomy of the eye, so it is highly recommended that you first uh, know about the anatomy of the eye and then uh, learn about its development. Now, first of all, uh, starting from a third week embryo, as over here, here is um, a third week embryo. So in the third week, you have a three layered embryo. As you can see here in this picture, you have uh, uh, an ectoderm, a mesoderm, and an endoderm. So you have the three layered embryo and this uh, uh, cross section is taken here and this cross section is shown uh, over here. Now, as you can see here, there is an ectoderm, a mesoderm, as well as an endoderm. So from here, we will start our discussion about the development of the eye. Now, you, we, uh, we all know that what happens that the, you can see here, I have explained it, that the uh, three-layered embryo that we have, the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. And after that, there is a central thickening of the ectoderm. That leads to the formation of the neural plate, as you can see here. Here is your ectoderm. And here is its central thickening. As you can see over here, the central thickening of the ectoderm takes place. Now, this central thickening is called as the neural plate, and the ectoderm over here is called as the neuroectoderm. And all the three layers you can see here. Now, what happens next? The next thing that happens that there appears a groove, as you can see, in the center of the neural plate. Now, this groove. Uh, what happened that this grooves deepens and deepens with the time as you can see here is the cross section taken and the neural groove is shown so you have the outer ectoderm then the mesoderm and the endoderm all the three layers are shown as well as the neural groove that is appeared in the neuroectoderm in the ectoderm as you can see here here is your ectoderm and here is the neural groove that appears into the uh, neural plate next what happens mm -hmm. Now, what happens is that there is central thickening, the neural plate ectoderm is called a neuroectoderm. Now, the central groove, which is called as the neural groove, we have discussed that just. And the next thing is that the neural groove deepens and its lips meet one another and they form a neural tube. So, as you can see over here, now this central groove have thickened and the lips meet one another, as you can see here and a neural tube is formed seen also over here so uh, the ectoderm as the neural groove in the ectoderm it becomes deepened and deepened and finally it forms the neural tube and after the formation of the neural tube as you can see over here the ectoderm meets uh, lips meet one another and the uh, once again we have a compact uh, ectoderm now the groove is removed but as you can see over here we have taken two sections one from the caudal area and one from the head region now the at the caudal region you will have a, a, a tube like uh, structure but at the head region this tube expands and form and this expansion will later on develop into the forebrain so it is mainly a forebrain vesicle or a rudimentary forebrain that will later on develop into the forebrain in the head area so it is the expanded portion in the head area of the neural tube next what happens next so far we have uh, discussed the neural groove deepens form neural tube and neural tube form the forebrain a neural tube form the forebrain vesicle in the head area at the cephalic end now what happens that the optic sulci arises from the lateral surface of the forebrain from the lateral surface of the forebrain optic sulci arises as you can see here over here this was the forebrain vesicle and from here you can see two sulci arises now these sulci are called as the optic sulci this one here and one over here so these are called as the optic sulci so these arises from the neural tube 
now what happened that this alkai is moved laterally and laterally as you can see here this alkai moved laterally and finally they reach the surface ectoderm now you know that this is the ectoderm that has came from the neuro ectoderm the central plate that was thickened and then it moved inside and formed the neural tube so the neural tube is mainly formed by the neuro ectoderm and over here is your surface ectoderm and they finally meet one another now what happens we have said uh, just read the text over here the optic sulcomachi evaginates from the optic vesicle into the mesoderm optic vesicle is formed and then they move uh, the distal part of the optical vesicle expands whereas the proximal part becomes narrow which is called as optic stock as you can see over here the uh, the distal portion of the optic vesicle it has expanded whereas the uh, the uh, proximal part has become thickened and this proximal portion is called as the optic stock now the distal end reaches the surface uh, surface ectoderm by the end of the fourth week so by the end of the fourth week the uh, as it is shown that it reaches to the surface ectoderm and the surface ectoderm then thickens to form the lens placoid as you can see over here the surface ectoderm has thickened and it has formed the lens placoid this is the lens placoid and it is formed by the uh, by the uh, surface ectoderm so and this will then uh, later on form the lens as you will see shortly now what happens that the lens uh, the that the lens placoid uh, there is a, a pit arises in the lens placoid what happens that this pit is formed by the invagination by the invagination of the lens placoid and that uh, further this pit deepens and form a lens vesicle so the tip deepens and deepens and finally the two um, areas meet here you can see this was the surface ectoderm at which the uh, lens placoid this is the lens placoid and this lens placoid uh, a pit is formed and the, this pit the later on form a vesicle and this vesicle will later on when these two uh, uh, surfaces will meet one another what will happen that a lens uh, a lens will be formed so the vesicle will then later on form the lens the lens a pit is formed by the invagination which further uh, here so we have just discussed that and the optic vesicle also invaginate along with the invagination of the lens placoid and form a double layered optic cup so that was that you can see that here the uh, optic cup is also invaginating along with it you, you can see here here it was just touching the surface ectoderm but now both the pit as well as the optic cup are invaginating so and this invaginates and form an optic cup this cup is now called as the optic cup and over here you can see the lens the lens and over here uh, all the three layers have been shown the surface uh, ectoderm the uh, mesoderm and the endoderm at this layer the endoderm uh, and all the uh, mesoderm are also forming all the other structures but for the simplicity and for understanding so i have just mainly focused on the uh, neural tube and the ectoderm and the part at which we are concerned so uh, that was all about uh, the formation up to the formation of the optic cup now we will discuss the formation of each and every part of the eye separately so stay, stay tuned